Oftentimes, out of great tragedy is born great beauty, and such is the case for the City of London's churches. On an early September morning in 1666, a fire that began in a bakery on Pudding Lane raged throughout the center of London. The fire destroyed everything in its path, including St. Paul's and 87 parish churches. After the fire, Christopher Wren was appointed chief architect by King Charles II and was tasked with rebuilding what had been lost. It was a project that consumed him for the rest of his life. The fruits of Wren's labors are on full view today, marvels of art and architecture wedged among the modern city. As you explore Wren's churches, you will notice that although each church is unique in its architecture, there are some very consistent characteristics that carry through from church to church. The first thing you will notice is that his churches were designed to admit abundant natural light. He used clear glass windows with round tops, breaking from the standard stained glass windows of earlier Gothic churches. Given his preference for natural light, Wren's architectural decoration is conservative, favoring clean lines, stone-colored walls, and whitewashed ceilings. Finally, his churches typically have a square or rectangular planned tower on their west end. This tower is often topped by an elaborate spire, which is unique enough to differentiate the church from others in the city. One of Wren's most famous works is St. Paul's Cathedral. The two most defining features of St. Paul's Cathedral are its stunning facade and its enormous dome, which was very dear to Wren's heart. The facade is defined by a two-story arrangement with two tiers of paired Corinthian columns. These columns form a pyramid topped by a sharply angled triangular pediment which points towards the dome above. In addition, the two towers on either side of the facade support Wren's most advanced spire design. St. Paul's Dome is a wonder of 18th century engineering. At the time of its completion, there were only four domes in the world that were larger. When viewed from the inside, it is clear that the dome's primary illumination is from the drum's clear glass rectangular windows. Among Christopher Wren's other churches, there are several that stand out. One of my personal favorites is St. Bride. It is easily identifiable by its wedding cake-like spire. Consisting of five levels, this is one of Wren's most iconic spires and his tallest in the city. Once inside, you will find a space that is both impressive and intimate and filled with natural light. In addition, this church showcases some of the best preserved and extensive black and white marble flooring that was favored by Wren. Another outstanding church is St. Stephen Walbrook. This church likely held a very special place in Wren's heart. Uh, it was his parish church. One of the most notable features of this church is its dome. In fact, it was England's first dome and most likely served as a prototype for St. Paul's. This church is generally regarded as being Wren's most well-conceived architectural space. When you walk inside, you will see that light floods into the interior from numerous windows and the dome lantern. In addition, although it has a rectangular plan, you will notice that the interior communicates a highly centralized organization. Another highlight church is St. Mary Aldermary, which is unique for its Gothic aesthetic. This church's tower is a masterpiece and one of Wren's most formidable designs. Anyone who knows Wren's architecture is bound to be a little surprised when they see the interior of St. Mary Aldermary. Upon entering, you notice the high ceiling, which features plaster fan vaulting. The shallow, saucer-like domes run the length of the nave and fill the entire ceiling with elegant tracery. These churches represent just a small sample of Wren's masterpieces. And the great thing about these churches is that they are located in a very small area in the center of London and can be easily visited in just a few hours.